something to say, something to say. Okay, guys, this is Our House 21 again. So, I went ahead and made the change to my high speed gears. So, you see over here, I've got my Mod 1 gearing and set in place. So, the idea is I'm going to start off with a little shake out with my um, Gen Zay's 5000 milliamp 2S battery pack. Just well, 5000 milliamp hour 2 battery pack just to see how it handles with this speed you know as you guys know with 2s pack you know I should not be anywhere near the vehicle's maximum speed but the idea is just to kind of start off shake her out this should actually give me higher speeds than my last run but I'm not GPS right now so I'm not going to say exactly how but the idea here is just to see how it feels at with those gears to make sure that the gears themselves are functioning properly after I get that shaken out, then I'll put the GPS back in and I'll go ahead and do some higher speed runs with this pack and with the uh, 3S LiPo. So we'll see how this comes out. Well, that actually went surprisingly well. Uh, visually, well, of course, not going with any instrumentation, it looked like I had achieved about the same speed with the 2S pack here with the higher gearing as I had with the 3S pack. So now I'm just going to go ahead, pop in the 3S pack, and just get some rough numbers. I mean, some rough impressions. Like I said, I'm not using the GPS, so I really don't know what it's actually going to do. However, impressions, you know, going back through I am getting um, a bit more heat off the motor but as you see it's not so hot that I can't actually put my hand right up to and touch it so I say it's probably somewhere around 120 degrees or so so not very hot um, it's, it's warm it's what I'm getting so um, go ahead and pop in the 3s and see what it does okay now I've got the 3s pack back in get ready to fire this bad boy up so impressions the 2s pack well a because I'm not running the GPS up front and I forgot to bring my extra body weights it felt a little less stable so I think that my weight or my lack of weight is working against me here in this situation um, other impressions um, you know it seems to be surprisingly stable it seems to be happy so we'll see what happens like I said once I get this up and um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do my one-handed video here just because you know given the fact that it's a lot less stable without the full weight I mean, those couple ounces make a big difference with that GPS unit so um, I didn't appreciate how much that would be until I actually kind of tried to take a little bit of a corner especially doing it one-handed so we'll see what I can do I'll try to get some actual running video if I can't then I'll just uh, you know, talk talk to impressions after I'm doing my teardown. Okay, so I just got done with my 3S LiPo runs, and that was a truly, truly eye-opening experience. Impressions. Well, first off, even with the 1410 motor, this thing is ridiculous. I, I wish I could have taken video of it running, but I'll have to do that again later. But, you know, impressions, this... 1410 puts out a lot of power even over at the high end you know it produces enough torque where I can spin the rear wheels so I did max out the throttle and um, and so I'm not sure what the actual speeds I got because I don't have the GPS but impressions you know the car really really missed the extra weight of the GPS and the front end was kind of light so it was trying to fishtail at, on me you know, and um, the steering, it was really sensitive to the steering inputs, you know, not in a good way. So the rear end kept trying to pass the car. I think the additional weight really helped to settle that guy down and it helped keep it in line. Um, but major impressions, well, like I said, it was 
really twitchy even at the high end to the point that I lost control of it at one point and she flipped on me and well lost control it went to a curb launched about 10 feet into the air and landed and broke my bulkhead here but this is a cheap part so I don't really mind too much easy enough to replace but actually you know for running a few more runs it held together perfectly fine um, but I really do need the extra weight now so even if I don't have a GPS I need to have some sort of counter ballast up here to keep it down um, other impressions um, the motor you know it's still it's warm you know it's a little hot but I don't think it's anywhere near 160 or 180 degrees so you know this uh, motor blower combination really do seem to have a lot of top end left in it uh, um, the chassis itself everything felt good uh, I did have some other issues with some screws coming loose. So you see right here, you got one that looks good. Uh, this guy right here on this turnbuckle tried to sneak away from me. So again, more Loctite is in order for several places in the car. But all in all, I was surprised at how well it held together at a pretty good rate of speed. I don't know if I hit 100. I was very well might have uh, with this gearing. Uh, I should have been able or capable of getting 100 miles an hour. Um, but like I said, I'm not telemeter. I don't have my GPS on it right now, so I really don't know for sure. But, you know, again, the purpose of this run, again, was just to do a shakeout, see how the car felt, and, you know, other than my mistake of not including my extra chassis weight to take the place of the GPS, it didn't do too bad. So I'm very, very happy with uh, the results I've gotten. And in case you're wondering what gears am I running here, you see I've got, well, I'm not going to be one of those guys because... I, what I've discovered is your gearing solution for your speed is actually going to be dependent upon a whole lot of things. So in my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about gearing issues. But um, I'm actually running a 36 tooth Mod 1 here with a uh, 25 tooth uh, pinion. So 36 tooth spur, 25 tooth pinion. And this looks like physically it's the largest gear set I could fit in this thing. But just from the math calculations point of view, this should be plenty of gearing to get me to the right speed. The main concern is what is my voltage drop going across this battery? And um, am I maintaining enough voltage in order to get me to the theoretical top speed for the KV rating of the motor? So I've got some ideas cooking up as to how I can get real data to see how much juice I'm pulling and feed that into my equations and have it you know, have a better idea of what's going on and what I need to do to fix it. But, you know, overall, I'm very happy. So, our house 21 again. Remember my motto, fly, fix, fly. Hey, you guys have a great day.